Rewriting the story of singlehood also means taking a long, hard look at the stories that are currently being told, like the Lifetime slash Netflix show You. Remember that? You started out on Lifetime. The batshit psychological thriller slash horror show now on Netflix is in its fourth season, and I'm looking forward to what happens next. There are theories about what it all means, and there are lots of great videos predicting what will be happening in the second half of the fourth season. I recently finished watching the first half of season four, and it is a bit of a departure from the previous seasons. But also not. This time around, Joe, sorry, Jonathan, has his own stalker. And whether you call him Joe or Jonathan, he is up to his usual shenanigans. He stalks, he creeps, he fixates despite being in the middle of some fucked up shenanigans. What I wanna talk about is the overall arc of how Joe and the whole show is one of the best demonstrations of how love and romance have been warped and twisted around to mean one and the same, even though they are very different, and how not knowing the difference between the two leads to shitty, toxic relationships and unattainable expectations for what a relationship should be. And why this show might be one of the most important shows on TV today. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but hear me out. You shows us what happens when we strain the edges of the nice guy narrative, what true love means, and how we use that to justify that it means you would do anything for the person you're in love with. And I know, this show doesn't have a lot to say about single women. What it does say is dating is a mess and it may get you murdered. There are so many twists and turns in the whole show that I'm not gonna try and sum them up here. Or I will, fuck, I don't know. Penn Badgley plays Joe, who sometimes goes by different names, and the actor, not the character, is a very hot human being because he's completely aware of what a monster his character is. So Joe is a stalker who spies and manipulates the objects of his affections into falling in love with him. As soon as the relationship gets real, he freaks out and finds someone else to fixate on. Wacky murder shenanigans happen and Joe always finds a way to fly under the radar, despite being one of the most disorganized serial killers ever. You know, actually, that sums up the whole show pretty well. Each season is a variation on that theme. And what really makes the show shine and be really instructive and the difference between love and romance is Joe's voiceover narration, which reveals the true Joe, who was both self-aware and the least aware person ever on the face of the planet. Oh my God, every time he says in his head, are you flirting with me? In response to the most innocent mundane things, I die. Do you think this peach looks like a butt? There is no wrong answer. It looks a little like a butt, yeah. Right? Thank you. Are you flirting? I'd like to think you are. We get a front row view of how Joe falls in love, stalks, becomes completely obsessed with the objects of his desire and creates a fictional version of them in his head. And we get to see what happens when reality intrudes on the picture of perfection he's built up in his head is shattered and the desired object has their own thoughts or goals or behaves in a way he doesn't approve of. This is the natural terminus of romance, where we can see all the flaws in embracing romance as a core belief system. Rom-coms and fairy tales have put in our heads that love is the most important thing and that we should do anything for it and that we deserve it if we do all the right things. And then I realized, if I want to win your heart, I'm going to have to show you I'm not a maybe. I'm the one. You paints a picture of someone who has internalized all of this and taken it to a murderous extreme. And here's the bigger problem. All of those behaviors, they aren't the actions of someone in love love, they're romance. But we've twisted the two concepts so tightly together that it's almost impossible to separate them. But they are different things and they serve very different purposes. Here is a clip from one of my previous videos on the difference between love and romance. Love and romance are different. To simplify, love is the day-to-day -day maintenance. It's the conversations, it's building your relationship with someone and knowing them, learning how they think and listening to how your actions affect them. Love is about the feelings of both of the two people in love. And romance. Romance is the opposite of that. Romance is the buildup of how the object of your desire will make you feel. It's about the butterflies, the anticipation of seeing the object of your desire. Romance is about the emotions of one person, you. Romance is fun. Romance is mysterious. It makes us want to know more. Love is actually knowing more and accepting that the reality will never live up to the picture in your head of the other person and then choosing to still love that flawed person anyway. Joe is 
a romantic. Joe is the very definition of a romantic. He likes the chase, the distance, the manipulation part of it, but he can't do the day-to-day -day relationship things, the love part of it. I guess he tries to in season three, but not without completely unraveling. Our skewed perception of love and romance is damaging to everyone, but especially to single women. It puts so much importance on romantic relationships while also completely overlooking the most important part of the relationship, the actual work part, the acknowledgement of the fact that relationships a romantic. Are. Joe is the very definition of a romantic. He likes the chase, the distance, the manipulation part of it, but he can't do the day-to-day -day relationship things, the love part of it. I guess he tries to in season three, but not without completely unraveling. Our skewed perception of love and romance is damaging to everyone, but especially to single women. It puts so much importance on romantic relationships while also completely overlooking the most important part of the relationship, the actual work part, the acknowledgement of the fact that relationships are indeed hard work. So I can't help comparing you to another Netflix property, Love is Blind. The final episodes of the third season just came out, the After the Altar episodes, and we get to see how the contestants are doing one year out from their fake, but I guess legally binding weddings. If you haven't seen any episodes before, I feel very comfortable spoiling this because you've likely heard all the hot goss you would want to know from the show anyway. But here we have the fallout from confusing romance for love. From people creating a version of someone in their heads based on their voice and failing to see that objectifying someone in this way is not healthy and it's not real love. I mean, not yet, at least. We do get to see the season's only real success story, Alexa and Brennan. They're cute and I wish them well. I don't think that they prove that love is blind or that the whole concept is, is in any way a good idea. I think what happened was that they got lucky. They are just two people who happened to meet who are both compatible enough and willing to put the work in to make a marriage work. Anyway, we also see the fallout from Zenob and Cole and Nancy and Bartiste and hand their love. First of all, I refuse to believe that either couple actually loved each other. They couldn't, not in that short of a period of time. Zenob said no to Cole at the altar and gave a speech about why she couldn't marry him. I mean, I don't blame her, even though the rest of the internet does, because he'd spent the night before calling her crazy, so... Anyway, the two hadn't spoken in the year since their fake wedding, and the producers of the show manufactured drama by throwing Alexa a birthday party and inviting everyone from the cast, and then forcing Cole and Zenob to interact. It was all actually pretty drama-free and boring. They kept bringing up their love for each other, but the problem was it was never love. It was romance. Neither of the two was able to accept the real person. They wanted the person they had manufactured in their heads, the one they met in the pods. Cole wanted someone who physically looked more like women he had dated in the past, and someone who never confronted him in any way and was always nice to him because they had no emotional needs of their own. Zeneb also wanted someone who was nice to her, someone who didn't talk about their attraction to other women, and who didn't constantly question her mental health. With Nancy and Bartise, Bartise said no to Nancy at the altar because... because I, he wanted to control the situation, I guess. And Nancy, a people pleaser, tried to have a friendship with him because she thought that it was a good look, and she's a people pleaser. Long story short, she said she didn't want to be friends with Bartise after all, and he looked fucking shocked, like no one had ever said no to him before. I was just proud of Nancy for saying no to him and not spending any more energy on him. That's really all. But here's another crossover between you and Love is Blind. In Love is Blind, Cole is clueless because of his male privilege. He's been privileged enough by being an attractive enough white man to not have to think too much about other people's feelings. So is Bartise. Bartise is shocked, shocked that Nancy doesn't want to be friends with him. And you could see it throughout the show of how completely oblivious Cole was to Zenob's body language. Scene after scene after scene where he was just talking at her and she would just shut down completely and she would go blank behind the eyes. Same with Nancy, actually. And you can see this happening in the After the Altar episodes where Cole says again and again and again that he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get why Zenob feels the way she feels and why she doesn't want to date him or talk to him. Bartise too, throughout the season, he's talking to Nancy about how hot Raven is and Nancy's eyes are glazing over and Bartise is just rattling on and on and on talking about how Raven is a smoke show or a smoke program, as Nancy says. So cute. But Cole, really? Fucking really? You've had a year to think about this and you still can't see where Zenob is coming from? 
Now, I don't think that Cole has to understand or accept any of Zeneb's feelings, but I, that he can't even see a little bit of her side just shows me how immature he really is. And you can see male privilege in the backlash to Zeneb herself. It doesn't matter what she says about her experience, the sympathy always shifts back to Cole. Poor Cole, she was so mean to Cole. Cole seems like a nice guy, so she should just forgive him and be nice to him. Enough with that. Her experience of him was unpleasant, she's trying to move past it, and she's being fairly civil, all things considered. She is not even trying to say he's a bad guy, she's not trying to stir the pot. She's on a reality show that has forced her hand to interact with someone she'd rather not interact with, and someone she'd rather leave in the past. You also shows us what male privilege looks like in practice and how it allows white, het cis males to move throughout the world. The Joe character is able to go anywhere because he makes himself blend into the background. He doesn't take on the world by being an alpha male and using force, at least not until provoked. He's very strong for a wiry little thing. But by simply being and being the kind of person that no one questions should be there, whether he's jerking it on the street or going to an exclusive private club that he is not a member of, very rarely is anyone disturbed that he inhabits any particular space. And no one thinks he looks like a serial killer. His stalking involves love bombing, which makes him seem nice and above reproach, making it unbelievable that he in fact is the complete monster he actually is. But when people say seems nice or doesn't sound like the person I know of characters like Joe or people like Cole, well, there's a little bit of romance there as well. You have built up a version of another person in your head from watching them on TV, which makes it hard to see the real person, the flawed person, or the dangerous person. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Love and romance are two different things, and not being able to recognize the difference between the two is harmful. Shows like you, while also being entertaining as fuck, reveal some uncomfortable truths about how all our brains are warped when it comes to our feelings. Romance gives us some high highs and it's fun to fantasize, while putting in the work to really love someone is tedious and time consuming. We all want what's easiest, but in the end, choosing the easy path and only focusing on those fuzzy butterflies isn't actually easier. And it's okay to indulge in some romantic thoughts from time to time. It's okay to have crushes from afar, to build someone up in your head and fantasize about your hypothetical life together. But when your crush doesn't live up to your expectations of who you think they are, don't murder them for it, okay? We'll see you next time.